We had so much fun with the first swimmer, we decided to invite the second. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. I love this. Welcome to the point where Kristen Burt, I'm so excited because honestly, we had so much fun with Benji that we had to invite Lacey on the show. Lacey Schwimmer, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. The best part is you bring your own music. Thank you. Yeah, it's like my uh, my own theme song, you know, and it has to come with me everywhere I go. It's so good. You're a good <laughs> singer. Oh, thanks. Yes. But, you know, editing, but okay. <laughs> I, that's some good studio mixing if they did hey, it. thank you. Because I can't even, like, stay on pitch, so it's all good. <laughs> All good. <laughs> I love it. Well, I want you to know, and I'm kind of like throwing this on you, and I said it's going to be plenty embarrassing for both of us. Oh, God. We worked together on a project. What? We did, although we were not on set the same exact day. It was an infomercial. Oh, God, which one? The Rhythm Rocker. <laughs> Can we bring up at least Lacey's little section? No. Yes. Mine gets mine's worse, I promise you. So wait. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. Look at this oh piece. We have to show this piece of like not so great. Look at people go back and forth. There's Lacey! You're out all the you remember this? You don't have to worry about the steps. Oh, oh my god. Was that Third Street Dance Studio? Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. That's okay. so embarrassing. I was the host, Lacey. If you can fast forward to my bad dye job, wait till you see my blonde oh hair. Oh my god, my armpits are sweating. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh god, um, oh god, oh god. I think at about like 220, no, 240 maybe. What? <laughs> when you see a blue sweatshirt, you'll know it's me. Oh no. Oh, I'm like shaking with emotion. I know. It's so funny. So this piece of, we'll get my clip in a second if I see it. Oh, you know what's so funny? Okay. He's going to keep a lookout for it. But I, what's so funny is that um, <laughs> people were asking me, because this ran for a while. I don't know if you know that. Because people would take yeah. screenshots of it. I'd be at a hotel and he'd be running all the time. Oh, great. That's <laughs> comforting. <laughs> and people were like, does it work? And I'm like, well, after 16 hours, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know what's funny? I didn't actually, like, feel physically do anything on it they just had me like sit on it and like okay say what you think I'm like it's great wasn't <laughs> prepped no information just literally hey Lacey come in film here you go and yeah. that was it and I'm like oh god this is so embarrassing I can't believe I did that <laughs> they sent one to my house did they oh, send one to your house No, I didn't get a free one I got a free one <laughs> for sure I got a free one and I was trying to remember what year this was um I don't know if it was like 2010, maybe. Oh God, it was Your a long time ago. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm not in this particular one. Oh we saw me God. though, I didn't have we? To, I have to see it. Yeah, you have to see my bad blonde hair. We're not some, somehow we're not <laughs> finding me in this. Isn't that convenient? <laughs> but I will make sure we find it because. Oh. It, yeah, it's really, really oh my bad. God. Oh my God. <laughs> Isn't that incredible though? And someone put on my IMDb page that, like, worked with Lacey Schwimmer on no. the rhythm record. Yes. <laughs> I did not put it there. Somebody else put it there. That's all right. Someone on Wikipedia said that I had a sixth toe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let, let's debunk the myth right now. You do not have a sixth toe. I definitely, toe. I can whip my toes out for you. I have 10. But, you have yeah. 10. There is not <laughs> There's 11. There's 10 total. <laughs> no, there's nothing else. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That is crazy. Well, I just wanted to kick it off with a laugh because Perfect. I mean, great. Yeah. Of course, we can't find my embarrassing footage <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah. No, I really think you planned that though. There it is. There's no. me. Yes. That's me in the blue sweatshirt for sure. Ooh, that's a really nice workout sweatshirt. Workout you're wearing. sweatshirt. In but case you want to sweat while you're hosting. The best part is my hair is really, really bad in that. Wasn't all of our hair bad? I mean, yeah. I, I just feel like that whole time frame, like new things. Oh. New things were coming out. Yeah, it, that's it. Right there. Wait, wait. Oh, I just dear. saw me coming. Yep. Okay. Oh, God. Um, yes. Ever, look at how bleached yes. out I am. Those amazing dance shows on TV. Most of you would run screaming if you had a chance to dance a hot Latin salsa. Hot Latin salsa. I'm like, I'm so crying. And my awful <laughs> spray tan. Look how orange I am. So oh, honey. But if you've tried like I said, things were kind of new then. They no. weren't new. It's so embarrassing. It's okay. But I wanted to make sure that I we showed my stuff too because it's it's really bad. Good for uh, us. But we were we together. I know. Here we are in 2018 together looking way better. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, it was great having Benji here and just really hearing about, you come from a dance family. Yeah. What yeah. is that like growing up in a dance family? Well, I didn't have a choice. So, like, I'm the youngest, 
so Benji's like almost five years older than I am. So Benji was kind of already doing his thing. And I just was like the little scraggly, like toddler running around getting dirty on the carpet at dance events. Like that was what I did. And I think a lot of the times I didn't want to be in that world. I didn't, it was so normal to me that it wasn't exciting to me. So I definitely tried to rebel a little bit against my parents' wishes. Even though they bribed me, they got me like every Barbie that I ever wanted <laughs> if I did a competition. But it turned out I was actually fairly good at it. And by the time I was 10, I was the United States swing dance champion. That's, were you enjoying it at that point because you were good at it? I was enjoying it because I got Barbies and money. Excellent. Yeah, I, I won money. And so I thought that was really cool. I was like buying juicy couture purses and, you know. That was the thing and, at the time. Oh, it was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I think like I, I learned to love it through bribery. That's healthy. <laughs> But you're, but look where it got you. So your right. parents actually knew what they were doing. Yeah, yeah. I think you know my whole thing is I just wanted to be different than anyone else in my family. And like my dad choreographed American Graffiti. My mom was a ballerina. It was just one of those things. Like it was so normal to be around dancers and sets and all these things. I had no want or need to be around it. You know, that's so funny. Did yeah. you want to like go? I just want to go play soccer uh, this weekend. Well, I did. Oh, that's weird. I did play soccer. <laughs> I know that always my seems nickname, to be the opposite. My nickname was the Bullet because I was really fast. I didn't make any goals ever, but I could run real fast. <laughs> Good though. I don't know. Is it? Did you get to a point though where you had to like? Yeah. Okay, so it's either soccer or dance. Oh, and you have no, to... I was never that good at soccer. <laughs> You're like, no. No, I was afraid of the ball. Uh, I didn't want to get, like, hit. <laughs> it was like, it was a whole thing. No, for me, I, I wanted to, I liked acting. I did musical theater growing up. I sang. I did all these things, and I thought that that was really great. But once I started hitting, like, 13, and I started realizing, like, hey, I'm actually having fun. I'm good at this. I can... I can, let's let's try to make something of it. But it was never in the world of television dance or anything like that. That wasn't really a thing when I was growing right. up. Right. It, it didn't exist. We were backup. But you, you know? also had a dad, though, that had had a very successful career, right. has a name. Do you Did you feel like a little bit in a shadow? Because, I mean, I'm sure when you're in the dance community, people are like, your dad, yeah, he's yeah. so good. Well, like, my dad's name in, in the dance world is the King of Swing. And he's basically, he's an egg with legs. He, like... He doesn't look like a dancer. He doesn't act like a dancer. He has no formal training. He's completely self-taught street dancer, the whole thing. So I kind of grew up knowing that he was different, but I was never in his shadow. I was always in Benji's shadow. Mm -hmm. I was always Benji's little sister. And it, it still follows me to this day, but I'm proud to be Benji's little sister. You know, it, it's different now. We both have accomplished so many things that... I'm grateful to be related. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah you're not like, oh, my older brother no, or anything no, else like that. It's no. so cool. Yeah. And as I said, you guys are my first siblings that have been on the show. I know. We do have to get both of us on. I am so down for that because... That Good would luck. be, I know. <laughs> so it, bad. It reminds me of at one point um, we had done a show here, not this particular show, but um, for Dancing with the Stars back yeah. in the day. We had Corky and Shirley Ballas on the show oh, together. Good luck with that one. <laughs> that to this day, that is one of my favorite shows yeah. I've ever done because yeah. it's, you know, I have to be honest. It's it's tough when I have a someone that's sitting opposite me and I know they're giving me the politically correct answers, and I don't expect people to just, um, you know, throw out every skeleton right. and throw people under the bus. That's not it. Yeah. But I, I just want authentic answers, and I, what I love. Love about the swimmers is that <laughs> we're uncensored you're uncensored you're unfiltered but I love it well thank you you're one of few but um, <laughs> <laughs> no you know my whole thing is like why waste time and sugarcoat things and make things seem different than what they are like say it how it is say how you feel and if the right people appreciate that, then those are the people to keep around, you know? And especially in Los Angeles, it's oh. a town of a lot oh. of BS oh, yeah. and a lot of like, that was great. Mm -hmm. And it really wasn't. Mm -hmm. I want someone to say, you know what? That really wasn't your best. Here's Thank what you. you can do. Thank you. Yes. Exactly. And that's that's how I was brought up trained, too. My mother was like the hardest coach I had ever taken from in my entire life. Mm -hmm. She she would basically make me cry and throw up because I was so stressed, so working hard. She used to duct tape me into my partners. I mean, like rough, rough stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's because of that that I think that I, I gained a lot of strength in this industry, which you have got to have a backbone in this industry. So it, it was good. It's just I think a lot of people are coddled. 
you know, and they're yep. just like, you're so good. You did so good. Everybody gets a soccer trophy, whether you Ugh. win or lose. That's the I stuff know. that I doesn't, I'm not a it. fan of it. Nope. I've always said it. So it. because losing, and it's been the greatest thing because I find myself very scrappy. And if I Ooh, lose, <laughs> scrappy, <laughs> scrappy, you know, um, there's not much of me. I'm five, three, you know, right, so I have right. to be scrappy. But when I fail, it makes me and motivates me to want to win and do better and totally. be better. Totally. I, I compete against myself yeah. even to this day. It's 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 never about who I'm up against. It's about what I did last and how do I fix it for this next time. You know, and I think that that goes to say with life lessons too. I mean, you yeah. know, we're always trying to be better people. Um, yeah. You know, better at our job, yeah. better whatever that is. Yeah. Better at relationships. That's important. Yeah, I agree. It's an easier way to live too. I think so. Yeah. If you're like, I totally messed up. Yeah. What can I do better? Oh, welcome to my life. <laughs> <laughs> All the time for me. I'm like, ah, today was not a successful day. Yeah. That <laughs> well, I have to say when I told the fans, you know, everyone that watches the show, like Lacey's coming on, Aww. you are part of a kind of like the storied, fabled, mythic time of both So You Think You Can Dance and Dancing with yeah. the Stars. When yeah. they were really <clears throat> both um, these like incredible mythical shows, they still are incredible, but um, at a time where they were just really special. Yeah, you know what's so weird is I look back and I don't remember a lot of my time on the shows. I watch the videos and I remember the performances or I, I remember, you know, people in the audience or or whatever it was. And I, I, I think I was so concerned with just nailing whatever I was doing mm -hmm. that I wasn't actually enjoying anything around me. You know what I mean? And yes. I, I didn't want to necessarily get caught up in the L.A. thing, mm -hmm. which is so easy to get caught up in the second you do these things. And luckily i had a family that was super super strong and they kept you know winding me down yep, when i would get up yep yep and you know i did go through it i did go through the hollywood thing and you know oh we gotta do this red carpet and it it got exhausting and i found myself wanting to be out of la and it's not necessarily the city because i love los angeles as a city I think it was more so the people that had the same mentality and the same goals as I did. And it was like everyone was just trying to get to the top, you know, just taking people down if they could. I just didn't understand that. I didn't understand why people would do that to others, you know? You're not the only one. I've heard this from Chelsea Hightower, who's yeah. very, you know. Yeah, she's, she's you know, she's kind of come out of a, of a dark place being in here, too. And I'm so proud of her for that because I know she's really faced some struggles. So... I think, you know, it just takes someone who has a really good support system mm -hmm. to kind of be slapped back to reality. And Yeah, and that's you know. okay because, it, you know, it, it is okay to go through that and it is okay to, you know, maybe your ego gets a little bit too oh, big because you get the so lesson. Easy. It is so easy to get that. It's I'm easy to you. get that. It's almost good to experience it because then you're like, this is not who I am. This is not how, how I was raised. Yeah. Pull back. It, I've, I've seen it be really great for people and I've seen it be destructive for others. And I think, you know, one of the good things that I had before getting onto any television, anything, was I had a career. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was working full time at 16 years old, traveling and teaching and competing and choreographing. National and, champion, West Coast you. Swing. I mean, come on, Thanks. that's a big deal. Yeah. Multiple times, yeah. not just once. Yeah. So, and, and Latin, too. I was a United States champion in Latin as well. So Incredible. it was just one of those things that, like, I knew I was set working wise. I never really had a scare of like, uh oh, what am I going to do with my life? When TV came around for dancers, it was really weird because it, it's never been that way. You know, I think the only thing that's comparable is, you know, look at like the, the musicals and, and old Hollywood where dancers were very popular, but it was really rare if you knew their name. That's right. So, you know, I, I one of my biggest idols is Sid Charisse and watching her whole career and studying that or Shirley Temple or any of those people that kind of paved the way for that triple threat to come through. I think that's the ultimate dream now for anybody. Mm -hmm. So I studied. I did everything I could. And when TV came on, I was just kind of like, well, this is fun. It's I, an opportunity. Yeah, I had no idea what it was. <laughs> I, I literally I'd never seen Dancing with the Stars in my life when it approached me. I'd never seen So You Think You Can Dance until my brother stepped foot on the stage. It was one of those things that I was just so blind by Hollywood. You yeah, know? you were busy doing other things. You are busy yeah. working and, yeah. and studying and everything yeah. else. Um, what was that ride like watching your brother win in season two? <laughs> it was crazy. Um, at that point, I had quit dancing. No way. Yeah, it was, it was a weird 
you know, teenager years, you go through everything. And I was kind of in a different position because I was working. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to school. I didn't have a life. Like I was in a studio or traveling to teach and compete and all of that. So I didn't really have that high school experience or anything like that. So when my brother came on, I was like, oh, I'm going to go to beauty school. I'm going to be a hairdresser. I dropped <laughs> you out. You could have done my hair for that. Uh, you would have done know. better, right? Look, like I try to cut my hair and it's fine, <laughs> but I wouldn't do it on anyone else. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, it's um, when Benji told me he got on the show, at first I thought it was crazy because I thought there's no way in heck that anybody's going to pick a swing dancer to be on this kind of a television sure. show. When you have these crazy contemporary dancers and ballet dancers and break dancers, it, 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 there's no there's no way that we can compete. You know, I was like, well, good luck, Benji. Like, you got courage. Have fun at <laughs> top 20 and then yeah, you're out. Yeah. <laughs> so then when he started, like, getting farther and farther, I was like, oh, this is real. Like, this is a real thing. Was your family coming in to watch Every the shows? Every single week. And I did, too. I actually dropped out to support him. Wow. Because I was like, okay, this is a real thing. Once I saw the actual first episode air of his audition, I was like, this is something really cool. I got to support him with this. Like, he would do the same for me. Right. So I just, I knew that it was something different and special for him, but also for our family. Mm -hmm. You know, the exposure and, and whatever. It it was really crazy to be in the audience and have people turn to you and know who you are without even really seeing you on TV or anything. It was very new to me. So... I supported him, and about halfway through the season, I decided that I wanted to do it too. So I started training again, and I got my butt kicked, <laughs> like, really bad. <laughs> I took every class. I went to the Edge. I went to Millennium. I did the whole thing, you know, and after Benji had won So You Think You Can Dance, he would take me to, like, his interviews and all these things. I'm like, whoa, this is, like, this is real life. This is mind-blowing. Yeah, for a dancer. Like, <laughs> what is this? Household names. I mean, some of the great things that So You Think He's Done has not only made dancers household names, but also choreographers as Absolutely. well. It's incredible. It's, it's incredible. And it's hard to, to tell that to anyone who doesn't understand dancing mm -hmm. because they just don't get it. And it's okay. Let them. But hopefully it opens the doors for people to accept that and know that creative thinkers and creative movement is okay whether you're boy, girl, gay, straight, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's yep. cool. It's a cool thing. But he started taking me to all these interviews, and I was just like, well, this is really cool. Like, he got, like, snacks in his dressing room. And I'm like, oh, I want some snacks in snacks. my dressing room. <laughs> no, but he – we got this weird call um, after he had won, and it was from his agency at the time. And they're like, hey, Christina Aguilera is looking for swing dancers. And we know that you and your sister do it. And, you know, because you just won, she wants to feature you in it. And we're like, okay. Whatever. Like, no, we don't want to. <laughs> no, so we went. I was freshly 18. <laughs> like, baby. I had, like, short hair. I wore jeans to the audition. Like, that's how, like... Yeah, you're not thinking I need, like, you know, I had a total... no idea. Right. I'd never auditioned for anything in my life. You probably didn't have a full <laughs> face full of makeup that time. Oh, no. Yeah. It was probably just, like, mascara and lip yeah. gloss. It was rough. It was really bad. <laughs> and I remember walking and thinking I was just going to do some swing dancing, and then they threw me into the actual mix of girls. And I'm like, oh, my God, doing, like, all this, like, sassy choreography. I'm like, oh, my God. In jeans, by the way. Jeans. And I also <laughs> brought swing shoes. I didn't bring anything else didn't have sneakers no, no 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 why would i right so i remember getting to the very very last cut first audition i ever did brand new 18 year old no idea and they're measuring heights because she's super super tiny so she can't have super tall dancers i was an inch over the cutoff i'm five three they needed someone five two whatever right right so they go but we would like you to do the swing side of things and can you assist Christina in learning how to swing dance? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I think I can do that. Sure. So at 18 years old, there I am sitting next to Christina Aguilera teaching her how to do all these things oh and my gosh. looking at the back, you know, the, the footage back and saying, okay, let's tweak this. Let's at 18 years old I had no idea what I was doing. I just did it. And after that point I got an agent. I did I mean and then it just starts coming and it, I had no idea what had hit me. That's like, amazing, though. And sometimes, it, it's in some ways, it's almost better. Yeah. I mean, maybe certain things you weren't prepared for, but at yeah. the same time, uh, you didn't have to sit there and go, I want this, I want that desperation sometimes we all get in this town. <sighs> yeah. That sometimes having that freshness and just going in with a naive perspective oh my God. is great. I, I think so, too. And I'm happy it went that way. So, 
you know, after that, I had my agency, which was really great. And I got, you know, another agent after that. And then that's what led me to So You Think You Can Dance, which kind of, I think, helped prepare me for that. Plus, Benji being on the show was like, right. you know, he, he basically told me everything I needed to be ready for and then some. So I think that I was just more mentally tracked for the show yep. instead of emotionally tracked. Because a lot of the kids that did it, did it because they either want fame or they wanted to win. And for me, it was more, I just want to do this. This is a really cool thing. I want the education. Yep. I want to like wear cool costumes. <laughs> it, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And it was a really great mistake. <laughs> it, it's such a great mistake. And yeah. you had your brother audition yeah. with you, which is incredible. Yeah. So you were like, all right, that'll get me, help me get through that round yeah. too. Well, it was crazy up until about the day before. I didn't know if he would be available or not. So I had a backup partner planned. We had a similar routine to what we did, but Benji and I had been dancing together for about a year prior to that anyway. So we had a routine and it was, you know, impressive. And, and so when he said that he could do it, I was just like, Okay, so I gotta actually like do this. Like, yeah, I can't, I can't slap. But it's off. a great part of the story, though, too. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. too, because they love to do those like little video packages. Oh yeah, and anything like, for a story. That's right, <laughs> but it's a good story. Yeah. It is a good story, even even all these years later. I, it's it's weird. It's 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 ten years ago that I did. So you think you can dance? <sighs> yeah, that's incredible. I know. When you sit that b back and think, like season three. Yeah. I know. What season are they on? They are 15 this summer. Oh my. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And you know, and it's, I, you know, you look back at, at those seasons, like one, two, three, four, uh, the old stage, like I a lot of people. I love the old stage. Yeah. I miss it. They have like a, a midway version between the newer stage and the old stage yeah. that they put in a couple, uh, last year. Yep. And which is better. So, but I do miss that old stage. There I was do too. Something so wonderful. There was something really cool about walking into the set. It just felt different than the one now. The one now looks like a stage. You know what I mean? It looks like a theater. Okay, here's the stage. Here's the set. Cool judges are over there. It, it was just, I don't know. When I walked into the set, it just felt different. Mm -hmm. You know, the weird backstage that looks like it's held up by, like, chewing gum and tape. and <laughs> You know what I mean? It was, it, was, it was really, really great to be a part of that show. And, and then I got to come back and choreograph for it and... It's really cool being on both sides of that field, even though I'm still scared of Jeff Thacker. Who's Are the, you really? Oh, my God, dude. See, and so many people call him Papa Jeff. He is Papa Jeff. He is Papa Jeff. He is Papa Jeff, but he is very intimidating. I, but I'm not – I was never a contestant, so I don't find right. him super intimidating. But No, I think he is one of the most talented producers that I've ever worked with. Mm -hmm. He knows exactly what it takes to get ratings, to get excitement in a crowd – and to create stars. He he really knows what he's doing. Him and Nigel, the whole team over there is just insane. They're top notch. Insane. And after I did the show, I didn't really understand that side of everything until I started working on Dancing with the Stars. And I saw how heavy that production and everything is so important into making that machine roll. Yeah. So I have a whole newfound appreciation for anybody in that field. It's just, it's a whole other side of things that no one really gets and, and doing a live production each and every week oh um God. especially people that have to turn around the the hair the makeup the costumes the the sets because oh my god dancing with the stars now comes up with these amazing sets that are ridiculous um they're the best in the business yeah. they really are yeah. All, both both shows which is incredible when you um got off of tour you were offered dancing with the stars weren't you was there uh, about a year or a month oh, or you, about a year months? because um actually on tour i tore my meniscus and i had to get surgery oh that's right yeah so i get back from tour and i go to see the spice girls revival tour yes like the day after and then the day after that, I had my surgery. So I was out for about four months after the tour. And I got this call to go to Norway to teach at some studio in Norway. And so I did. And while I was there, I get an email from my agent. He's like, you need to come back. And I'm like, I'm in Norway. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't even like, know where that is. You're like, I'm, I'm not in like, you know, yeah. down the street. No. And I can just have a quick flight. He's like, you got to You got to get on the on the next flight and, and get your butt back. It's really important. So. I got on, and he was like, hey, have you ever seen Dancing with the Stars? I'm like, yeah. Like, <laughs> thinking, oh, that, that cheesy thing. You yeah. Know, I had no idea what it was. I had never <laughs> seen it. I knew some of the dancers on it from just competing and, and that whole world. But I had no idea what it was. So they're like, hey, yeah, they just want to interview you. I'm like, okay, cool. 
going for the interview. I have black hair with like neon colors in it. And, <laughs> and I'm, I'm like never prepared for anything. So, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm like a but deer in headlights. But you're doing you though. That's the, <laughs> that's the part that people like though. It's humiliating, but hey. It's look. not humiliating. I, <laughs> this is why, because this is what I'm going to say. Because if you look like everybody else... You look like everybody else. What's right. special? There's nothing special. Totally. So totally. you're the girl coming in with neon highlights. Do it. Right. And at that time, it was really cool. So just so you guys know. <laughs> like my spray uh, tan. Like no one. <laughs> spray tans were so cool. Like the orange ones. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I go in for this interview, and I, I meet two of the producers. And, you know, they're like, so um, you haven't had the right training, like, for ballroom. And I go, well, yeah, I have. And they're like, well, you've won Latin stuff, but have you ever done ballroom? And I go, I've trained in it. I just never competed in it. It's boring, <laughs> <laughs> which is totally true. Sorry, but it's totally true. It's just not my cup of tea. And so they're like, well, what would happen if, you know, you come on the show and the judges, you know, are rude to you? And I'm like, kick him in the face. Like I was so, <laughs> I was so candid. Like I had, like I said, I had no idea what I was getting You're myself kick into. Poor Glenn Goodman in the face because you didn't like the score. <laughs> and I actually, I think I said that to him a couple of times, like, you know. So anyway, uh, <laughs> I get to. I get a call two days later, and they're like, "So they want you for seven seasons," and I'm like, "Oh, that's the, that's the standard contract when you've signed." Totally that's right. standard. Yep. Doesn't mean that they're going to use you every seven seasons, but that's a hefty contract for a dancer that just came off a tour making pennies compared to what this contract was. Right. So I was just like, okay. <laughs> I never watched an episode, but let's give this a go. So these contracts just, th we can sort of generally talk about them, but right. um, if you're not used that season, you don't get paid. It's not a pay or play. Nope. So it's just like, and that burns off. If they don't use you that season, that burns off one season for you, correct? Totally. Yeah. And then is this true? Um, if you are, say, knocked out in week two, mm -hmm. if you're not appearing in a pro number or anything else, you're not getting paid either. Correct. Okay. I mean, there, there, are, there are contingencies and, and little special things that happen if you make it certain past, you know, past a certain time. You get or, some, maybe it, some pay bumps yeah, and yeah, things yeah. like that. Yeah. But it's, you know, at that time when I had joined it, it was very different than it is now. So I don't know what it is now, obviously, but from what I understand, there is a the original like sort of seven year contract, yeah. and then people or seven season yeah, contract, yeah. I should mm -hmm. say, not <laughs> seven year, seven season <laughs> contract, and then you have a little bit more leverage right. when you um, make it that long because Correct. they want to keep you around. Yeah, hopefully that's always the goal. Yeah, that yeah. is um, something I really before we kind of dive into some of your contestants that you oh, had. Lord. I know, let's talk about those. But one one other thing I want to ask, and um, because I think that this is something that's important, if you are are done with your seven season contract and you know they, they say we're not going to renew or anything mm -hmm. what what is that like what should people prepare for because I think life on a top 10 show in the United States on a major network is a huge deal and you've done it you know not only with you know dancing with the stars but you've done it with so you think you can dance what is that like that sort of transition that first season out because do you have to find your feet a little bit well what was weird with me I I did it um about three solid seasons. So that's a year and a half of being on television, mm -hmm. doing the tour, the whole thing. And they didn't pick me for the next season. So I'm like, hmm, okay, well, that's fine. You know, like, no skin off my back. I still have my work that I'm doing. I just happen to live in LA for no reason. You know what I mean? Right. You're like, I could live anywhere else right. cheaper. <laughs> so, you know, I was kind of taken aback by it at first. And I took the season off. They still brought me in for like performances and choreography and that kind of a thing. Um, but I took it off. And I think that's actually when I did that awesome infomercial. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the Rhythm Rocker. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I did other projects choreography appearances that kind of a thing um then the next season rolls around and they're like we're not going to use you again uh, and i was just like okay that's i'm totally fine they're like but you know we still want you to do choreography and, and performances and all that i'm like that's cool too which i love doing on that show it it's such a cool thing you get to work with every artist under the sun right. i mean so grateful for that back experience. when they had the results show which we I don't know, have anymore I unfortunately it's so sad. i know but for me I looked forward to that side of the show more so than having a partner on the show because I know where my career could go versus in the moment, this is cool, you're teaching a celebrity, cool, right? Well, and it's also showing what you're actually capable of, right, whether you're dancing right, or right. choreographing because with a contestant, if they can't dance very well, right. you're c confined to this Only level. Only so much, yeah, 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 exactly. So I got 
to work with some really amazing people thanks to Dancing with the Stars. So I will always, always be grateful for that 100%. Do you have a favorite that you worked with, artist-wise? Um, Whitney Houston. Are you kidding? Because mm -hmm. she was still alive. You know, yeah. I feel like she's been gone for so long. I know. But, I mean, you forget yeah. that dancing's been around for a while. Yeah. Uh, the Jackson family. Jeez. Mm -hmm. uh, Taylor Swift. Yeah. When she was, like, just. Baby. Yeah. Baby Taylor. Um, but, yeah, I, I've worked with some really, really cool people. Reba McIntyre is probably my favorite of all of them. Everybody says she's the nicest woman she's ever. She's the coolest person. What's really crazy is I worked with her, right? I did this little routine with Dimitri at the time. Mm hmm and about a year or so ago, I'm at JLo's birthday party in Vegas. Okay, I'm just at JLo's birthday. I'm just <laughs> oh, sorry. Let me pick up this name I just dropped. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> over there. It created a crater in the floor. <laughs> and Reba's there. So I'm like, oh my God, do I say hi? Do I not? She's not going to remember. Like, I'm like freaking out. And she comes over and she looks at me just like, kind of like, I think I know you. And she goes, you're from Dancing with the Stars. And I go, yeah, I choreographed her. She's like, oh my God, I know. And so she hung out. It, it, it's really awesome what Dancing with the Stars has done for dancers. Yes. It, I couldn't be more grateful for being a part of that show. It's just, it, you can't ask for that. Like, it, it's, it's so crazy. It is so crazy. So I'm grateful for those experiences because of that show. But afterwards... Getting back to what we were really yeah, talking circling about. circling back. Whatever. <laughs> um, you know, I was still doing what I was doing before I got on any of these shows. So it was teaching, choreography, performances, competing still, but I kind of threw that away because I didn't like to practice so much. <laughs> I still don't like to practice so much. So, I understand. I get know. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, would you have advice for someone that some of the younger pros, honestly, because I do think about this because yeah. we're kind of in a weird little transition with Dancing with the Stars. We do have a full fall season, but right now we have four weeks ahead of I us. Know. There's, as far as I know, everything that I've heard, there is no summer tour. Um, so what, what would you recommend for someone that is, you know, in their early 20s and, you know, has a little bit of extra time? What would you sort of cultivate? Well, it's a little different now than when I was on it. You know, when I got on it, it was actual ballroom and Latin dancers. And so now it, it's it's slightly different because they're trying to keep the show alive, and I totally get that. So all the dancers do ballroom and Latin. They're mm -hmm. not necessarily top, you know, ranking uh, competitors. Right. Which doesn't matter for that show. But a lot of them come into it with the intent of just being on that show, and I don't know if they necessarily plan what happens after because right. everything does eventually come to an end. And I think that I always prepared myself for that. And I made connections in teaching and educating and choreography and all of that. And it's hard. It, it, it's really not easy. I mean, I still even struggle to, to keep that train rolling, you know? Mm -hmm. It's the power of TV. You know, you're given a window of opportunity. And it's up to you what you do with that steam. So, you know, it, it is hard. And I've seen a lot of my friends kind of fall off of that ladder and not really know what to do. They either open up studios or, you know, go back to teaching private lessons and, and all of that is great. And I still do that too. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of them, it kind of hits them in the head a little bit when everything's over. And this goes for So You Think You Can Dance too. You know, a lot of the kids expect they're just gonna move to LA, they're gonna get an agent and they're gonna book work. Yep. And it's not the case. <laughs> and sometimes you work, you do book work because of So You Think, and sometimes you don't oh, book work honey. because of So You Think. <sighs> this is so embarrassing. <laughs> I did an audition right after So You Think You Can Dance before Dancing with the Stars. Okay. It was for Neo. Oh, who is now on World of Dance, full circle. I know. <laughs> Weird for, full circle. I live in Vegas. He went to the Las Vegas Performing Arts Academy. Weird. Amazing. Anyway, I mean, whatever. Cool. Fun facts. Um, Love it. So, yeah, I, I, um, wait, what was I talking about? <laughs> I'm like, you know, like squirrel. <laughs> squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Oh, <laughs> uh, we were talking about what they should do oh, after oh, your audition. audition. After So You Think. So, you know, on my resume, it says, so you think you can dance finalist. And they just like looked at me and they went, hmm. And it, it, they did not want any part of it. I think now it's a little different. It's been around longer. They know what it is. Also, social media is a huge factor now, which didn't exist when I was on So You Think You Can Dance. It just wasn't a thing. Yep. I had MySpace. 
MySpace. When, what was his name? He was t Tim Tad Tom. 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 Tom was everybody's friend. I'm like, what was his name? <laughs> I deleted Tom. Yeah, Tom He's was a like fake friend. Bye. <laughs> You're not real. It was Friendster before that, so it was really Friendster. kind of Friendster. Friendster was. See, I don't even know that one. Yeah, kind of amazing. Crazy. Right? I know. Isn't yeah. that crazy? So I mean, it was just a different time. But I think, um, you know, for the new season, especially of So You Think You Can Dancers, that are going into this, expecting fame and social media presence and all this stuff, it will come naturally, but I don't think that should be your end goal at doing something like this. Right. You know, it, it's such a cool experience that I fear that a lot of them come in expecting greatness, and then that's kind of when it jumps back at them and bites them in the booty. Um, so yeah, I, I really hope that the season is well, and you know, I just want nothing but the best for them. I know, fingers crossed that, because this know. is a very quick four, four week season. I know. And Oh, they were just announcing uh, like live voting, and now the West Coast isn't a part of the. I, I know, I know. It's frustrating for at least the first week, and we'll see how this rolls and stuff like that. But you know, a lot of this is surrounding American yeah. Idol too, so it's like I know it's it, everything's very fluid right now at yeah. ABC. I just like I have nothing bad to say about Dancing with the Stars or the producers or anything. They really have done a fantastic job with everything they've ever done. Twenty six seasons so far. I Come mean, on. Is that like the longest running show? Oh no, like Price is Right. Uh, and and uh, The Simpsons are also. Oh. <laughs> Price is Right and The Simpsons, I think, have the same. Um, gotcha. Yeah, it's kind of Crazy. incredible, though. Yeah. Oh, and um, Saturday Night Live as well. That's right. Yes. One of my favorites. Yep. I believe Price is Right and Saturday Night Live are neck and like, neck at the same. Wow. But like, I don't know. I just think with Dancing with the Stars, I hope it doesn't fizzle out. I think it's a great positive thing on television. That's right. And employs a whole bunch of great dancers and choreographers. Totally, and uh, you know, and it also it, it highlights music and it highlights all these things that people might not have access to. And I don't know. I just you know everybody over there, Ashley and Dina, and everybody who works that show, are just so incredibly talented at what they do. And you know, I, I hope that this four week thing doesn't like. I just wanted to. I know. Yeah. I mean, I want it to be a success, but at the same time, I'm like, we need at least six weeks or something. But I know. It seems very short. It seems very short. But yeah. I, it's a network decision. Everything, again, because of American Idol, budgets, time, everything yep. changed all around. Yep. Um, I, I want to quickly talk about some of your contestants because oh, you kicked okay. off season seven with Lance Bass. I love Lance. Okay. So, so do I. Here's a weird thing. I was like the uber weird fan of NSYNC. Oh, my God. Did you die just a little bit when they were like, and you, or you open the door and it's Lance? Well, here's how it happened. It was a little different for me. You know, sometimes it is a full surprise, but I knew the day of who it was. Mm -hmm. And I think they did that because it was my first season and they were just like, look, don't like fangirl and be Fate. all weird. <laughs> like, you know <laughs> like what I mean? That. But then I was like, I, I started watching some of the stuff back. Like the first intro is like, how do people act on TV? Because I don't really know anything about that. You know, <laughs> again, deer in headlights. <laughs> and I remember just trying to plan like what I was going to do, whoever the celebrity was. But like, would they know who I was? I had been on Say You Think You Dance, but that's totally different demographics. Different and, audience, yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, are they even going to know who I am? This crazy girl with neon in her hair who doesn't look like a dancer. Like, it was just weird for that time. And when they told me it was Lance, I remember just, like, looking at the paper with, like, his little headshot on it and, like, all the <laughs> facts about him, how tall he was, all, all this stuff. And I'm just like, oh, my God, is this real life? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I get to dance with someone from NSYNC. Now... I already told him, though, he wasn't my favorite. Who Was Justin your favorite? Of course, because he was, like, the best dancer. Yeah. And he had, like, cool top ramen hair. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he was different. From Mickey Mouse Club. Well, I didn't. I mean, there, was nice you're like, no. Time, but, <laughs> um, but no, and then what was even crazier is my season with Lance, we had to go to Florida for some reason. Don't even know why. It was, like, a charity event for Chris in insane Kirkpatrick and we stayed at Joey Fatone's house so like my childhood drop, drop. <laughs> yeah. I was like freaking out I'm like I'm sleeping at Joey Fatone's house but I had like his like little daughter who was like just like three at the time like I was playing in her playroom with her like I was just like this is so weird and even to this day like it's all full circle it's really crazy my boyfriend his name's Frankie Marino he's out of Vegas he's a big guy out there him and Joey became friends while Joey was doing Dancing with the Stars Vegas. Oh, yeah, they did that show for quite a which while. Which I was also in. Yep. And 
one of like the last shows that Joey was doing with us, um, he's like, hey, Frankie, why don't you come to the show? And, you know, he's like, oh, great. I have to go see like this dancing show. Like, what is this? You know, he's like a, a classical pianist and like just overly trained. And so he he sits there and he texts Joey the second like I do my first number and he goes, who's that girl? Like, <gasps> what what is that? <laughs> so Joey set us up. Thanks, Joey. Ah, oh, you have an in sync connection Isn't to your romantic weird? life. I love that. No, I do too. That's good. Yeah. You came in third with Lance. That's a good. That's no, a, I. Did yeah, I? I think so. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I no, was like, sorry, was you're right. Sec- I'm like, yeah. Because it was second with Kyle. I was like, I know. Yeah. Kyle Little Massey. Kyle. I do love Kyle Massey too. I love I've interviewed Kyle. him a few times. He, he really is the sweetest, most energetic, craziest kid. Big I've, heart. Oh, my God. Big heart. I know. I know. We had a blast our season. That was the most fun I ever had on the show ever was that season. Probably because of him, too. I mean, I'm sure totally. he helped with that experience, you we know. He literally just... practiced like 20 minutes a day. He was just that naturally talented. It, it wasn't, I don't know how I go, talented was the word. It was, <laughs> he pulled it off. He knew how to fake it. And like, I didn't have to teach much to him. It was more like, what else can I get you to do? Yeah. You know, because I had to be smart, too, because he was young. He had the Disney thing at the time. So we couldn't do too much adulting on the show yep even though it was an adult show so it was a little challenging for me to kind of you don't want the sexiest rumba that you can possibly choreograph for him and people wouldn't take it seriously no it's not that's not right it's not appropriate yeah so we always did really fun things and i always tried to like you know keep the youth alive i I know i love kyle (laughs) oh my god i love kyle the best he's so much fun you know i I was, you know, going back and I'm like, oh, you were partnered with Chaz. Yeah. And, you know, it's so interesting now in 2018, we have not had another transgender mm-hmm. contestant. I know. And it feels like the time is now. You know, it, when they they approached me that season, because I had taken a season off um, prior to that, and they said, you know, if we bring you back, um, it's going to cause a little bit of controversy. So I knew going into it, I was getting someone either that had like a criminal record or like, <laughs> like I was expecting the worst. Right. And, and when they told me, I was just like, awesome. This is so great. I'm like so excited about this. You know, I had the first openly gay contestant, which was Lance. Yep. They gave me that my first season, <laughs> which was a big deal at the time. Did you have any resistance? I'm Social media wasn't as big as it is right. now, but did you feel any resistance, hear any resistance yes. or anything? You did. Yeah. Especially, you know, from a lot of the religious groups that watched that show mm. and the network. and But it was nothing but support from anyone from Dancing with the Stars and ABC, the yes. cast, um, the audience. I mean, it, it, was, it was really, really great. So I think that definitely opened the door. So when Chaz came in the mix, they're like, how would you feel if you danced with a transgender? And I'm like, bring it on. Like, let's go. So great. (laughs) But I love that. And I don't think people realize, like, especially if we even go back, because I mean, that was what, season 13? We're in season 26. Chaz really put himself out there, out there, exposed um, One of it, the most bravest things that anyone can incredibly do. Incredibly so. Absolutely. And I just was thinking about this today, and I'm yeah. like, what an impact. And yeah. I, you know, in 2018, we're still struggling for I transgender know. men it's and so women to be to accepted. <laughs> um, and they're struggling. But I was like, look where Chaz put himself. Monday night TV, exactly. Monday and Tuesday night TV to at that time, but top 10 show. And a Disney owned network. Like, I, I actually was super surprised, first of all, that they even said yes to that idea. Yep. So with that being said, I had a lot of respect for everyone who made that possible. When I met Chaz, I, I, I don't know, I, and maybe I'm just weird and open and I don't really care, but I didn't notice anything different. Like everyone's like, oh, are you gonna call him a girl or a boy? Or I'm like, are you guys like out His of your mind? His preferred pronoun like, is he. Like it's not, it's not hard to it's figure not out. That hard. Yeah. So we just became <clears throat> friends. He was, you know, very nervous. It was very scary for him. So for me, I had to make sure I was more of a psychologist in you these lessons. You had to be lessons. very solid, right? Yes. We had death threats. We had police following <sighs> us because we just had to. I mean, there were so many. Me sad, I know, I know. But you know what? I think it opened the door, hopefully, in the future of the show or other shows, same sex partnerships. We talked about this with your brother because there was a possibility of Benji and Adam possibly. Well, I think that was more fan driven than production driven. Yeah. But at the same time, I think the time is now. It. I hope it's now, and I hope people can start opening their minds to that. You know, 
it's just it is i think a touchy subject for a lot of people in this world unfortunately yes and i i think that it's funny because the generations even behind us don't really blink an eye i know at all to this I know. um it is older generations that you know things were just different when they grew up and things like that and yeah. i think um you know, we all of us just want like love, acceptance. Yeah. We want everyone represented. Yeah. I think, especially in the media, and I yeah. think that's super important. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I I hope for the future that it could happen. Obviously, it's. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, but I would absolutely be down to do that. I think that that is a game changer for so many things. And I've had the first open gay. I had the first transgender. Why not get the first female female? Love it. <laughs> um, I'll throw it out there because this is a good question. So you're open to returning to Dancing with the Stars if they sure. ever asked you. Yeah, yeah. So you think course. as an all-star? If they're doing it this season. They I'm, are doing all-stars oh, this crazy. season. They're doing, and I think it's a little bit more of a mix than the set, you know, Right, time. yeah, like um, filtering people in and out. Yes, yeah. and a choreographer. We, yeah. Yeah, I was like, to. yeah, okay. I'm just like, I, that out I, there. Well, back to the Jeff Thacker thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> when I went when I went back to choreograph, I was actually really surprised he even let it happen because I don't think he likes me. <laughs> A lot of people say this to me. They're like, I don't think Jeff likes me. Yeah, which I get. That's like his shtick, but. For me, like, I just want, like, black and white, like, either like me or don't like me, let me know, we're cool, you know? Like, I have respect for you either way. Totally. And I just remember walking in, freaking out <laughs> in the interview of, like, presenting him ideas and going over songs and, like, the whole thing. When the contract came through, I was just like, oh, my God, he likes me. <laughs> he really likes yeah. me. <laughs> so, you know, it was super cool. I, I got the, uh, who was it? It was Valerie and Ricky. Uh, Ricky won this the show. I can't remember what season it was. Uh, that was season eleven. Oh, Ricky you are Obeda. a pro. Look at you. <laughs> I am an encyclopedia yeah. of useless knowledge. Yes, right here. Yeah, yeah. Ricky so and Valerie came running around. Yeah. yeah, and so it was a really, really great experience being on that side of everything. But I still had the same kind of weird nerves about being on the set, setting a piece, being in front of the cameras. It was, it was still, it was like bringing back memories, and I was like. Oh my God, am I okay? Is this all right? Does everyone like it? Like, I was so nervous. So I was funny. like shaking. If you watch back, like me applauding them, I'm like shaking, like looking at them, like freaking out. And I'm like, why? Like, it's not You're a like, deal. this is okay. I know, I know. But it, you know, it, it's it's already like, it, it's sort of embedded, it's imprinted in you. That's the word so I'm too. looking for. Yeah, because yeah. you've already, you've been a contestant, yeah. you know what that side is like. And... Yeah. I just, you know, I love that show. So any opportunity to be involved with it again is something I would absolutely be a part of we'd love to yeah. see you i oh, know thanks, thanks. i know i get a lot because people are like ask her this ask her if she come back oh, to dance no. with the stars no they want they do want to see you people yeah. really miss you on tv and what's, i mean that very honestly well, thank you thanks you everybody. can look at my twitter feed and see oh. it <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy is um a lot of people think it's our decisions yeah it's and not. i don't know how that happened how that like stigma became but you know a lot some of the people are personal choices to leave for seasons or whatever right some get different jobs and and that's great for me it was just after Chaz's season they sent me to Vegas to open up the show there then they sent me to the cruise ship to open up the cruise ship and after that it was like remember me on I, TV? I, I had yeah. missed I'd missed a whole year of, without being on the show so you know I, I would definitely join back i've had conversations with everybody there and um you know it's i think it's a timing thing and i think it's it's a right partnership thing it's a personality thing it's a location thing it's at the end of the day it's a tv show that's right and it's they've got to make good tv yep. so i understand that it's not it's not about your talent or how good you are at choreographing or if you look good in a costume or not it it's more they just need to make sure it's the right fit at the right time. Yeah, and their job right now is to keep Dancing with the keep Stars a top 10 yes. show, or, or at least a top 20 show. That yeah. is their job right now, and yep. that's what they're focusing in on. What are you, you're living in Vegas. So I what am. are you working on? What are oh you God. doing? What can we, where can we see you? Oh, you, right here, of course. Right here on To The Point. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, you know, I moved to Vegas actually right after the Vegas show. I just kind of ended up staying there. It's a really interesting city. I have a friend that loves it there. She's hosting one of the morning shows. I think Morning Blend. Over. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've, I've co-hosted that many times. You have my, yeah. my friend J.J. Schneider. Oh, I don't know. I'm All right. Not, I'm, I'm, I'll show you her picture. Great. Yeah, Another I, blondie. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Vegas. Yes, Weird. Vegas. Strange. No, I, I, I kind of just end up staying there. And, um, you know, necessarily for me, it's more choreography driven out there and teaching out there. I travel for work. 
you know, I come to LA, I go to New York, I, I go everywhere to do all these things. And, um, you know, for me, I can kind of be wherever I want to be. And I moved out of LA about a year and a half, two years before I went to Vegas, because I just needed out. I, I it started getting heavy mm -hmm. to be here. And I just need to be closer to family. So I did. Nothing wrong with that. I bought a house. I did that whole thing. And then I got very bored very quickly. <laughs> so luckily, Dancing with the Stars called and said, hey, we need you in Vegas. Great. So You're like, I here packed I go. up, went to Vegas, and then I ended up staying there. So, you know, I do a lot of touring and teaching and choreography and performances. And yeah, just... You know, follow my follow my Instagram. I love that. I know we can see where you are at any uh, given point, yeah. which is fantastic. Do you have any goals that you have yet to achieve that you're like, I really want to do this type of show or choreograph this or direct this? Uh, I've never choreographed a movie. Oh, yes. I have performed in movies. I've never choreographed in movies. So I think that that would be a huge step. Obviously, I think that's a few steps away from what I'm doing. I'm filming two TV shows in the next week, which are gonna be great. Um, Can you tell us what those are? Are you allowed? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> and <laughs> Can you hint? <laughs> yeah, so um, Facebook is coming out with their own little network. That's right. So I am doing a new show. I cannot tell you what it's called, okay. but you will know. Great. Um, and that actually starts production next week. I'll be back out here doing rehearsals for that. Um, and then following the next week or so uh, i'm filming a new tv show pilot in vegas about dancing <gasps> and like performing it's like basically glee it's like singing acting dancing type show yeah scripted choreographing and acting in it as well oh i love that yeah all right you keep us posted I on will, all that because that's so good Thanks. and i really think and we only have a couple minutes here yeah. but we need to get we need to coordinate calendars yes we need to get benji here Perfect. we need to get you here i love it we will figure this out maybe sometime during the so you think season it'd be that, great yeah it would be kind of fun just to get your thoughts on like what's happening yeah. means you have to watch but uh <laughs> <laughs> well i might have a reason to watch this season not gonna say anything else other than that but yeah. i will say that i saw the audition uh-huh and it was a good one i was there at, i just happened to be there at that moment um in beverly That's hills so when they were crazy. auditioning so yeah. it was it was awesome oh, so good, and next good. week is academy I for know. them so I, i'll be at academy next uh tuesday oh awesome so i'm just gonna throw this out at everyone so next week to the point is going to be a little bit later because i'll be spending my afternoon with so you think you can get dance the scoop. Yeah, get in the scoop <laughs> so dance with the uh, dance with the stars to the point will be at 5 p.m next <laughs> week pacific time um and i've got a really special guest and I, I think that um some of you may have seen carrington Payne. um she put out a video last week talking about where she's been I, everyone had been saying can you get her on the show i'm like i don't know where yeah. she is i yeah. can't locate her um she went through some incredible struggles uh go to her youtube page you can find out what that is it's carrington and drew she and her boyfriend have done some youtube videos but she's going to talk about her um addiction issues how she battled them how she won how she's sober and she's going to be sitting in this hot seat i'm so proud of her that's I awesome i am too and you know she looks great she looks really happy um she and i've been communicating and she just is really excited to be here and Aww, to tell her story so that's great. yeah we're that's here awesome. to root her on you know that's i think that's, that's so important we all need to support each other so. amen i sister. know i know all right so uh with all of that we want to thank you guys for joining us here today at to the point where can everyone what? find you on social media oh my god um i'm like active on instagram the lazy schwimmer that's pretty much it though yes it's not lazy <laughs> schwimmer it's the lazy that's someone schwimmer. fake who's pretending to be me and i can't stop it so yeah <laughs> do that <laughs> all right you guys if you need more dance news of course check out dancenetwork.tv thanks to the popcorn talk for hosting us and of course we'll see you all next week but remember it's at 5 p.m pacific time <laughs> from producers maria menounos kevin undergaro phil svitek and the entire popcorn talk network we would like to thank you for tuning in for questions or comments be sure to visit popcorntalk.com I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only, not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.